Welcome to another episode of Timeless Wealth Holiday Edition. Welcome, Happy Amy. Holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everyone. Sean, I'm really impressed that you put the hat on. Yeah. <laughs> Begrudgingly. At some point, I got to get in the Christmas spirit. Maybe it's right now. Yeah. Next year, I'll get you a Grinch hat. I'm not a Grinch. I know. You just don't like wearing the hat. I get it. <clears throat> it's a little much sometimes. So what we're going to do, this is our second annual kind of holiday gift giving ideas. I know we talked about this last year. We'd like to support kind of local and highlight some unique products uh, just to give some people some ideas on the, the last minute rush uh, before the holidays. You know, you know, it's hard for me to talk about gift giving, right? <laughs> Why? Why? Well, I'm a minimalist. Yeah, that's true. Like I, I don't like possessions. Well, there's some stuff in here that will that will that will work. All right. Well, I'm I'm excited to see. Yeah. Okay. Coming up next. Welcome back, everybody. So we have some really unique gifts that I thought we could talk about. Um, some that we uh, that were really done and produced by our, our very own clients and other by great Canadian businesses that are celebrating some anniversaries. So, Amy, over to you. You have a couple interesting things you so want to talk about. So, sometimes when clients retire, they get into these passion projects. And we had some that happened last year. These ones actually came out late last year. So, we missed it for our, our podcast, but we're going to highlight them this year. We've got one. Um, by J.B. Simon called Golden Love. So for anybody that loves pets, and I know a lot of our clients do, mm -hmm. um, they become part of the family. This is a really heartwarming story about a journey of love between a woman and her golden retriever. And there's a lot of family dynamics and how she leans on her dog for support. And it's a really beautiful story. So that's a really uh, a good one for the, for the holidays too. Nice heartwarming. for the for the pet lovers. For the pet lovers. Love so let me, let me ask you when when Miss Simon wrote that book. How long did it did it take from concept proof of concept to her actually writing it? Like it might like it you know that's a pretty sizable book. Because I remember when I first met her, she was in. She told me about this, right? But she's still working, so she's not even fully retired. So she's still working and was able to to do this, which is very what, cool. That's very impressive. That's great. Another really good book is A Life Well Danced. So for the people that are art lovers out there and passionate about dance, mm -hmm. this is a story um, written by Jane Gall Spooner. And it talks about her her dance teacher. And, and oftentimes it's the stories of why somebody decided to become a teacher in dance. Those stories aren't often told. So right. it's a very well-researched book um, following her, the dance teacher's life. And uh, again, it's a really good one if you want to pick that up this holiday. Again, what a passion and, and just the, uh, the discipline to take that from start to finish. It's not easy to... Well, how many people do we meet that yeah. say... I want to write a book. It's on their list of things to do, but Guilty. to actually like, I Guilty. know, <laughs> but in, you've talked about it in the past too, Guilty. but it's one of those things that's tough to do. Lots of books here, Amy. I know, Lo lots love of books. the reading. Okay, so we're going to show a few investment books because this, we are investment people. Okay. Oftentimes we're getting asked questions for, for kids. Like how do I get them interested? And mm -hmm. you know, they don't want to sit down with mom and dad over a PowerPoint. So yeah. how do we get them more inspired? So this one's more for the younger, uh, I would say probably early teens to mid teens, but I actually really like this book and it's got a lot of, it's really well written. It's uh, creators of biz kids or Bill Nye, the science guy. Mm -hmm. They've put this together, which is really cool, but it's called how to turn a hundred dollars into a million. So catchy title, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> not my interest. But it talks about getting your first job, starting your own business, budgeting, the power of compounding. Like, and it's done in a really fun way with little worksheets and little tidbits it, it talks about like what's oprah's first job or jeff bezos first job it, it's really really well well put together so i really really like that hello one. can i see that for a quick yeah, second it's really really good then for kind of the older i would say later teens early 20s how to money so it's the ultimate visual guide to financial basics so again it's really easy read you can kind of pick up and jump into any part of the chapter and just takes you through all sorts of different concepts, like what's a mutual fund, what's an index fund. Oh, Jean Chatsky uh, is a co-author. Okay, yeah, I know her well. Yeah, yeah. So that's a really good one. Like, yeah. you know, she's a former uh, contributor on uh, the Today Show on the NBC. Oh, cool, yeah. cool. Yeah, this one's really well put together. So add that uh, one to your how list. to money. I like that. I like the title. Well, and we often talk about Morgan Housel. Does it does it go with the companion companion book, How to Adult? <laughs> How to Adult. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's true. That's that true. is kind of what it's yeah. about, right? Yeah. 
It's good. It's yeah, like well it. What were we saying about Morgan Housel? What were you saying about? So the- Morgan Housel actually came out with a new book. I yeah. think we'll save that one for the new year. Mm-hmm. But the Psychology of Money, his first book that yeah. we loved. That that's another one I would put on the list yeah. uh, of the financial books. But his yeah. new one. We'll probably do a book review. And, in the and there's year. another one I think I mentioned to you prior. Uh, it's oh, called, yeah. It's called The Richest Man in Babylon. Uh, yeah, you were telling me about it, that one. It's actually great. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we can talk about that next year. More book reviews. Great. So, Sean, you don't like a whole lot of stuff, right? <clears throat> Very minimalist, I think. Yes. Well, I, and probably I quote, like minimalist. not winning that battle. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> but there's some really good food products out there, right? So, mm-hmm. celebrating their thirtieth years in business is Balzac's coffee. So anybody great in Toronto, coffee. it's such great coffee. Great coffee. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. They actually have a special anniversary blend that's out. Um, it's fantastic. Like it's such, this is kind of our go-to. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the marble roast, but there's also one called farmer's blend. It, it's really, really good. I have so. an interesting story around Balzac's coffee. So sure. a couple of years ago, you know, my wife for Christmas, uh, bought a coffee maker. It's called the Jura. It's a Jura S8 actually. And it's, it's not an inexpensive coffee maker, but it makes like crema coffee. Now I was quite miffed to be honest when, you know, my wife showed me the coffee maker because I had... I just liked a grind, grind and brew Cuisinart that was like $100, and it did fine. Yeah. This coffee is incredible. And, it, and what we use is the Balzac coffee, and you can go to Costco, and what I will do is when I see it on sale, I'll buy like eight bags of it because <laughs> it doesn't really go bad. Yeah. And we use it in the De Jura SA coffee yeah. maker, and it just makes La Crema coffee. So it's awesome. I haven't bought a coffee in Berry in probably about three years. That's amazing. Yeah, that's great. That's really good. No, I love that one. Great coffee. Another one. So I love going to the one of a kind show. Yeah. And you find so many like local artisans or just across the country that come to that show every year. And this one's a really, this one's a new, so it's a new company, but it's based out of New Brunswick called Salt Winds Coffee Company. And so this is a gift pack that they have. You can order online. But the whole idea is when they would drink coffee on the ship, it was infused with salt water. So it has a very unique taste mm-hmm. that actually kind of cuts the bitterness and it becomes a little more smooth. And they actually have an award winning, they were, what was it called? They're the bronze winner, of some international award, which is really cool. Kind of so it's yeah, really cool. it looks really, really good. It's actually interesting to, uh, to use salt water. Uh, like, as you said, like, for example, a while ago on ships, you use salt water because Technically, when it comes to even just using your coffee machine at home, you're technically not supposed to use filtered water. Like the oh. coffee beans, when the, when the water is rushing, I guess through the uh, through the beans right after you grind them, th- the minerals in the water, and whatnot, mm. actually create more flavor as it's running through the thing. Yeah, I learned that when I was at uh, Starbucks at one point. They're like, don't use filtered water. Your coffee's way better if you don't use filtered water. Interesting. So it's mm. interesting that they use salt, as you mentioned, yeah. salt water, because the salt will break down the bean and more flavor, I guess, will be extracted. It tastes kind of like a salt water taffy, so a little sweeter, a little smoother. So You're a man of much information, Jalal. <laughs> <laughs> coffee connoisseurs here. I don't know that. Okay. Okay, so another co- Canadian company that's uh, celebrating, and I'm... I'm embarrassed to show this because I've eaten half the pack. Jesus, <laughs> I was going to say Mar- someone rated that cookie. Down. Mary McLeod's uh, shortbread. If anybody's had these, they're super, super addicting. I can't say I have. They're celebrating 40 years. Um, she started the business, Mary McLeod. She's no longer with us, but she started this in 1981 in Tor- Toronto's Capitol Theatre. And uh, it's still family run business, and these are delicious. So, if you would like to try one, I'd love free. to try one. I you love should try bread. them before I eat them all because I it's, love, just, it's I getting love, out of hand. I love shortbread, getting out of hand, but they're delicious. Do you do baking over the holidays? I think so. Me personally, yeah, no, Sean, you bake. No? You don't really no. eat a lot of sweets. No, I don't. Yeah. I, I do a lot of cooking, but no, I don't do a lot of baking. Yeah. So, well, you can pick up the baking, Mary's McLeod's shortbread. These, okay. are, fi- these are fire. I know, isn't it? They're still fire. You should probably take them away. I'd, I've already had... It's like before noon and I've already eaten I don't know how you many cookies. Want no, no, I'm fine. Thank you. But I appreciate the offer. So again, you're very practical, right? Mm-hmm. So I am too when I like to gift give. So socks and underwear are always the things that you have to think about. Love and funky again, socks. Okay, so Saks Underwear Company... They do men's underwear, but they also do funky socks. So I, I picked up a really cool pair of like yep. pizza and subs and French fries. And Those but again, cool. they're great stocking stuff, stuffers, right? Mm-hmm. Canadian business. Actually, the the founder started at Ivy Business School. That's where it first started. And then they were on Dragon's Den. The founder <laughs> has since sold it, but it's still um, it's still based out of Vancouver. So fantastic. Yeah, nice. really cool yeah. stuff. So and good quality too, right? It is. So, yeah, they're a little thicker. 
They yeah. almost feel like snowboarding. I'll have um, to check those out. Yeah. Uh, uh, socks. But again, just like pop them in a uh, stocking and away you go. So I've got a really good one, Jalal. Well, that's what I'm excited well, actually, for. Well, actually, no, no. Why before we go to that one, this one's oh. more for the, you know, somebody that likes to kind of health conscious. If you're into yoga or balance, as we age, this, I've learned that you're supposed to focus more on your balance mm-hmm. and things like that. And Sean, you know, and you're in the martial arts. So I found this really cool product, but it's really, really tricky. So it's called Montreal Board. And they're made out of recycled wood. Can you hold this? Mm-hmm. And so the whole idea is, can you see that okay? Yep. So you, you have to stand on this. So it's kind of like in the circus, those rollabolas. It's very, very difficult. It's, that is a very uh, a co- core demanding workout or core demanding exercise. they're beautiful, right? It's beautiful yeah. wood. They're really, really nice. But it, it's amazing how focused you have to be and the, the workout on your core muscles trying to do that. Yeah. Now, if you go online, we'll put all the links to the products below, but if you go online, they actually show hockey players on top of the board using their stick and their puck while balancing on this darn thing. Yeah. Like, it's incredible. It's, it, it's exceptionally hard until you until you get it. Then once you get it, it's like riding a bike, but your core is definitely engaged. It's really, really tough. Have you tried it? I have. Yeah. I'm getting there. We're going to keep it in the office so we can all kind of... <laughs> New Year's be, resolutions I, are going to be coming up. I want to so. be one of those like, you know, super workers, super employees where like I can sit, stand on a standing desk on, on that and like just type away. There you uh, go. Not, not happening, not happening. So Jalal, we were just asking about cooking over the holidays and uh, yeah. you and I had a conversation about your refrigerator. <laughs> yes. Jalal is a man of, you talk about minimalist. Have you mm-hmm. seen his refrigerator? He no, sent me a me picture the other day. Yeah, yeah. It literally had water. Yeah, a Brita filter. Yep. I think a can of Red Bull. Yep. And coffee creamer. That's all it has. And that is it. That is it. That, that is, is his refrigerator. That's that my fridge. Perfect. <laughs> it's the bachelor fridge. I love it's it. Crazy. It's crazy. I'm the like, bachelor there's not fridge, even. Guys. What if you're hungry? You need a snack. Water. That's that's why Uber, that's why Uber exists. Oh my goodness. You know, and if literally, at, at, you know, at some times, if there's nothing available, like if I wake up at two, three in the morning and I'm famished, like I'm starving, and there's nothing, I go to bed hungry. Like it's there's crazy. literally nothing it's crazy. To do. So it's super not efficient to have a large fridge like that running. So there's a really interesting ah. product out there. By a company called Coolatron. What? Look at this mini fridge. That is so cute. Isn't it cute? That's wow. actually awesome. Okay. It can hold up to six cans of pop. It's really cute. Now, some people put their face creams you're supposed to keep cool and stuff now, too. Right. It's oh, I, didn't know. I didn't even know that. Isn't that cool? So, so it's it was, like an old retro fridge. It's a battery powered. Wait, so this is a real it's, fridge? It's got a, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. You just plug it in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How interesting is that? Isn't that neat? That's actually really cool. I Set love the retro look. Joel couldn't even fill that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But this is way more efficient for you <laughs> than a big empty refrigerator. Uh, terrible, guys. But they make a whole lot of products. Again, it's a Canadian business. They mm-hmm. ma- they, they manufacture, yeah, Coolatron. And so they've got products like this, but they yeah. also have big coolers for camping or right. even heating. They actually come in handy too over the holidays when we have all that overflow of food and you're trying to stuff it in. Having one of those portable ones that you can just plug it in and keep your food either you know warm or what, cool. What a neat concept! Isn't That's that awesome, neat? and yeah. I like how there's a handle. I mean, I think it's great. You know, if you're if you have kids that are, are children that are in university or college, yeah, absolutely. You know, put that in their dorm rooms or in their bedrooms. Yeah. So you know, if they're living off campus and they can. Kind but there's of keep a lot it. of cosmetic products now. They say to to preserve the the lasting power of whatever ingredients are in it. You're supposed to keep them refrigerated. So a lot of people are using these too. You'll find them on their bathroom. Interesting. Counters, so. Okay. I could put that right beside my uh, my bed. There you put go. Like water bottle there. You don't even have to get up. You just nope. <laughs> well, and you're going to put on the, our website, you know, links to these products in terms of where you can get them yeah. and how Absolutely. to purchase yeah. them and so forth. Um, okay, so so now you've got ideas, right? The, the Coolatron one definitely, definitely, see? definitely piqued my interest. So see? this is the season now where you're going to see nonstop holiday movies being played on the television. Yeah. And I wanted to have a little bit of a conversation around, in your view, what's the greatest holiday movie ever and why? Thank you all for listening. And if uh, you don't tune in again, happy holidays. Happy and holidays. I look forward to hearing, uh, seeing you in the new year. Yep. Happy shopping. <laughs>